G'day, welcome to Art with Alison. All right, now I do apologise. I did start doing my cup and I realised I hadn't plugged my microphone in. All these problems I've been having with my microphone and I'm pretty sure I've got it fixed now. I've got a new phone. Look, yeah, I, the phone I replaced my other phone with turned out to be rubbish, didn't record properly, didn't record the colours properly, all sorts of problems. Anyway, they let me swap it over for a far better one. Uh, anyway, I've now plugged in and hopefully, hopefully it's all going smoothly. Uh, okay, so what I've got here are all our Tezza colours. So this is our Tezza Pearl White. This is our Tezza Pearl Canary Yellow. Show you the consistency. Quite thick. This is uh, noises in the background of my dogs. <laughs> uh, this is a Tezza pearl, uh, pearl tangerine orange. Beautiful colour. A Tezza gold. A Tezza marmalade. And this is a Tezza crimson. And this is a Tezza Bordeaux red. I just mixed this up. I wasn't going to add it and I thought, oh, actually, no, it needs another rich colour. I'm doing warm colours for this pour. I'm going to do a ring pour in warm colours. And a Tezza Mars Black. So I shall continue. So I've only just been putting like a oh, teaspoon and a half of colours in so far. So probably about what I'm going to do with this one. That's what I'd call a teaspoon. And then half. And so with the Arteza colours, I have found, could be proven wrong today, but I have found that the Artezas don't, when they're on their own, they don't seem to make many cells, unlike the, I uh, find that with the Liquitex Basics and the uh, Araldos that we get here in Australia, they all make lovely cells. And certainly the DecoArt Extreme Sheens, they explode in cells. I'm going to add more black here because I want a big amount of black to set. And but I'm not going, which I won't go straight to white because I don't want grey. Uh, I'm not going for cells, so that's the reason I'm choosing this. I wasn't actually even going to use white in the first place. I was just going to go straight from the yellow, but then I thought, well, having a bit of white there will just give it that extra brightness in the middle hopefully, because of course what you put in your cup first is what comes out last. Lovely colour. As I keep saying, that's all I've got of it though. I've just got... Right, so this here was the canary yellow, pearl canary yellow, and it's just a little tiny tube of 22 mil or 0.74 ounces. So only a teeny weeny tube that I've squeezed out and then added flow troll. So I'd, I'd, I'd say it's probably made almost 100 mil maybe because I've put, already put some in here just by adding flow troll. What's up? No, you shush. Dogs are out there barking a while ago, so I brought them in. So I don't want them out there barking at night, even though we are far from neighbours, but they see. We've got, we've got possums in the trees, and they bark up at the possums. you think it would make the possums want to go find another tree, but they don't seem to be bothered by it. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs go crazy, like, oh, let me get to you. Or else it could be, we've got lots of 
uh, kangaroos out there and also wallabies because I live in a big bush block in the middle of the southwest West Australian bush and actually if you watched I think it was at the last video, the video before last, I actually managed to catch some uh, emus going down my driveway. So I put a little little snippet of film there. I thought you guys, especially if you're in another country, you might be interested. And it's not normal, or well, it is normal, but it's not often <laughs> I get to see emus on my driveway. I know that they're in my property. And I sometimes see them from afar, but they're very shy emus. And they run off at a drop of a hat. They just, yeah, they're very flighty. And they took off as soon as they saw me. With emus, it's the father that looks after the young. Once they're hatched, the father emu takes over and brings up the babies. So I know it was a daddy emu with its, his three youngsters in tow that I managed to catch on film. So I think this would, this would do it, I think. There's a bit of black here. just a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas that we're doing today. I'll just clear all this away and I'll be back with you in just a tick. Right, my table seems to lean a bit. So I'll just put that there otherwise I find the paints all head off up that, in that direction. Let's see what you can see. All right, what I've got here, I've got some Atezza Lemon Yellow that's got some Deco Art Satin Enamel in it. And it, yeah, but I've watered it down with a bit more Floetrol. Anyway, we shall see if it makes any difference whatsoever. I just want to put a little puddle of that in the middle. for having a puddle or a base coat is so that your pore paint, the paint from your pore can, can glide across the canvas because otherwise it will stick to the canvas and roll over and then you lose your composition. So this way it will hopefully just all spread out nicely. And I've also got here, oh, what's that there? A little something might be an air bubble. No. I've got here. This is a mixture of um, gold and red and black. And I think it had some bronze in it as well, actually. And I will put this around that. Once I've done the pour, then I'll use that for the rest. All right. Now that's running that way a bit, so maybe. All right. I'm just going to concentrate. 
now. <laughs> Start off with a bit of a straight pour and then do, I find it's best to start with fairly large circles. If you can, trying to keep them even, which isn't the easiest. and trying to keep them in the middle. Oh, that's a lot of yellow. Let's stop there. I won't let it even get down to the white because I don't want to have just yellow in the middle. A lot of red and a lot of yellow. Alright, let's pop some of this around. Hopefully it's not too thick. It was very thin and I thickened it up with extra gold. But I might have thickened it up too much. That's what it's looking like. But you don't want it thicker than your pour, otherwise it's going to have a struggle rolling over it. So it should either be the same consistency or a little bit runnier. Could be a little bit runnier. It helps it to run over the top more easily. If this is too thick, then it's not going to run over and it'll start rolling over itself. So I have to watch that. If that starts to happen, then I will need to thin it down and put some more on it that's thinner. See how it goes. It does look a bit too thick. Got a bit carried away, I think, because it was almost like water. It's been sitting for a while. I find paint, it's amazing how long paint can last for after you make it up. As long as it's in a sealed container. sure it's too thick. We shall see. All right. Let's have a look. So far so good. See that black line is continuing to roll. It's not rolling under. Oh good. That's good, so we'll just stretch this out. Wow, red and black and yellow. <laughs> what happened to all the other colours? No, that's what happens. I stretch it out and then you get to see the other colours. That's the idea of it. And the reason I wanted to have the one with the satin enamel in the middle, 
underneath his paw was in the hope of see it. I don't know whether it is because of that, but you see how it kind of looks a bit, a little bit fluffy, soft. It might be because of the satin enamel I put underneath. I'm just stretching it out before I let it go over. I might let it go over now on this corner. Back. By me doing that with my finger, it was just and I need to re I need to grab the push pins underneath, not the sides. Otherwise I'll muck up any paint that goes over the edges. So yeah, the reason I did that is it just helps pull the paint over because when you're getting over to a corner like this, you're gonna lose a lot more of your pattern the longer it takes to for it to go over if you know what I mean like all the rest of this pattern around the edges and if you don't want to lose it I'll get off that corner there now it's a bit hard to get my hand over there to do it for that one and oh yeah, I think it's all right if it doesn't go completely over then you have to go back and do it again, basically. Unless you want it left like that. Alright, so now I'm going to do this corner. And back. So it's good to go back to the middle so that you, well, you have more control of the paint basically. Let that come over because we want it over the edges, don't we? Well, there is a lot of yellow in the middle. <laughs> uh, Have a look at it. Looks a bit funny like that, doesn't it? I might just let this catch on this side the same as it has on that side. The orange part. Then go back over. And now I am going to toss it off that smudge. I think I'll bring it down here first. Just, just bring that down there. I don't really like that bit of black sticking up there. And now. Let's go over the edge with the yellow because there's too much yellow. So I'm going to toss half of it off. But I wanted to do it in that direction because I do like those stripes of red that are on this side of the yellow. nice it's brought out all the lovely lines that's much nicer I like that so you just have to bring it back a little bit so that you don't have all the, the depth of the paint at one end she otherwise it will be take longer for that part to dry all right, well that looks nice. I'm happy with that. I'll just wipe my hands and then I'll fix up these corners because it hasn't gone all the way over the corners. 
And so you can either try and get bits off the mat where it's poured off. Oh, have a look. No, I don't know that will work because it's all very pale. So this here's got some stripes in it. So I'll see if I can salvage this to go on here. I might have to make up another little pot just to do the corners because what's left in this pot here as I said is mainly just yellows sometimes you can just do it a plain colour what are they parking at? That might be alright. Shush, shush, shush. I don't want to let you out because you're going to go out and bark at the possums. So while I've still got some with pattern on it, I can see if I can. So you get your pattern on the on your palette knife and then drag it down and it's dragging down that pattern with it. Now here's still got a bit of that brown so I think I'll just try and get that brown off. Start from up here and bring it down. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, if it doesn't. So say you can make up a little pot. It's got the brown on it. See how this goes. It's all right, shush, shush, shush. Good girl. Good girl for not carrying on too much. Yeah, I don't know. This corner I might see. I can do it from what's in here. And I need to watch when you're pushing your canvas around you don't knock it into something, especially when you've got the lovely deep sides like there are on this canvas. You don't want it knocking into something and mucking up your pattern on the sides. Let's see what I can find on the... Oh, it's, oh, there's some lovely bits down here. Scrape that off. Right, so there's a lovely part here with some golden things on it. So I'll try and follow it down the line. And the same one here. Pull it down, scoop up a bit more. Oh, this is lovely paint just here. Are you trying to get any lines that might be in the paint that you're scooping up? Because that always looks interesting. And just a plain colour and try and drag the line all the way down if you can.
I particularly like these little stripes in here. I think that's quite pretty. Sorry for the reflections. When it's wet, it's very shiny and reflective. Which is quite nice for close-ups on this one. A few interesting parts. Some of the sides, it's a bit hard to get to on this table. Get to all of them, but that side's hard to see. It's not very light. So I did that I did this one and I did that one. Which I'll be showing you shortly, but yeah, let me know which which you like most of these two. Because they're done with the same colours, but this one was finishing off with the, well, starting off in the cup, but <laughs> with the um, light colours in the middle, and this one had the dark colours in the middle. All right. Well, thank you ever so much for watching. And I shall catch you again soon. Actually, it looks quite nice on this angle, I think. Kind of looks more 3D-ish on this angle, I think. What do you think? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Might take the photo from this side. <laughs> okay, thanks heaps for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.